Hey guys, Dr. Ben Edwards here. I'm founder of Veritas Wellness. I practice conventional medicine, medicine as a family practitioner for about 10 years and then integrative medicine for another 10 years. In the past two years, have really been focused more on a deeper level into our thoughts and how our thoughts impact our DNA, our genetic expression, and our mitochondria, that mitochondria that can produce energy or inflammation. Um, homeopathy is the topic of today's discussion. Here's two books. There's lots out there. The Homeopathic Revolution and uh, Discovering Homeopathy by Dana Ullman. You can go listen to Dana Ullman's interview I did with him on the podcast page, veritaswellnessmember.com. We archive all those podcasts there. So homeopathy, I never knew what that was. Most people uh, don't know what that is. A lot of misinformation about that out there. Um, sometimes people use the word homeopathy and their meaning just holistic in general, kind of natural medicine. But homeopathy is a very specific branch of natural medicine. And when I say natural medicine, I'm talking about all the different healing arts that have been around for hundreds and even thousands of years. Traditional Chinese medicine, thousands of years. Ancient um, Ayurvedic or Indian medicine, Native American medicine, uh, chiropractic, acupuncture, homeopathic, naturopathic, herbalist, all these modalities of natural healing and all these natural healing modalities work with, come alongside and work with your body's natural healing capacity. As opposed to allopathic medicine that just kind of forces a symptom to, to be suppressed, which doesn't really work long term. But that's another story. <laughs> Homeopathy. In the 1800s, I believe is 1845, the American Homeopathy Society was formed or association, AHA. And there were about 23 or 24 homeopathic medical schools in the United States in the late 1800s. There were over 5,000 graduated homeopathic physicians in America in the late 1800s. In fact, um, the head of the New York Health Department during that 1918 flu outbreak was a homeopathic physician and actually was accredited with saving a lot of lives using homeopathic modalities in New York City and advising those residents to do that. They had a lower death rate there. So there's a lot of history in homeopathy. What I wanted to talk about today was a paper that was published. I believe this was in 1988. It was Dr. Jacques Vinveniste. He was in France. And Dr. Vinveniste developed a laboratory test called the RAST test. And that's a blood test. And you may have had this done. If you're allergic to dogs or cedar or pollen or grasses or whatever, or you're trying to find out what you're allergic to, your doctor could draw your blood, send it off to the lab. And what they would do is get samples of your blood and they would expose it to all these different allergens like dog dander and cat dander and whatever. And then they would analyze the blood to see if your mast cells degranulated. So what that means is these immune system cells that hold histamine as just a storage vault for histamine, if they come into contact with something you're allergic to, then boom, they just release all that histamine at once. It's called degranulation. So that's the test that Dr. Vimbanese helped to develop. Um, is this allergy test. So one day in his lab in France, he had a physician come, a homeopathic practitioner come and say, hey, I'd like to test a homeopathic remedy on this allergy test to see if it can produce the degranulation. So I don't remember exactly what allergen, so I'll just make this part up, but say dog dander. How you make a homeopathic remedy is you would take a vial of pure water and put a little bit of the a dog dander in there, shake it up and take one drop out of that and put the one drop into another vial of pure water, shake that up, take a drop out of that and, and just keep do doing that. And you can do that 10 times or 50 times or a hundred times, but you do that dilution enough where there's no physical dog dander left in that vial. That's homeopathy. That is a transfer of information <laughs> from the physical matter into the water. The water holds the information of that physical matter. How he proved this was he took a drop of that water that had been diluted, I forget how many times, but at least 10 times. He put that water in the patient's blood and it caused degranulation, same as if the dog dander was put into that blood. Amazing. There was no dog dander in the homeopathic dilution but it elicited the same response. So Dr. Benvenise was shocked because he was a conventionally Newtonian-minded, Western-trained uh, physician. 
totally shocked, couldn't believe it, thought there had to be some kind of error. He repeated the test multiple times. Then he decided this is true and this is game changer. It's going to revolutionize modern medicine. And he went to the journal Nature to get this published. And they peer reviewed it, looked at it, and they came back to him kind of with the same mindset of there's no way this could be. <laughs> we need to send part of our peer review team to your lab and observe you and your team to make sure there's no fraud because this just doesn't make sense. So they did that and they watched him every step of the way. Ultimately, this did get published, created a huge uproar. Dr. Jacques Vimanis ended up spending the rest of his life defending his name and he died early probably from the stress of having to do that. Then Dr. Luc Montagnier came along because he was observing all this and he wanted to prove if the journal Nature and Dr. Jacques Vimanis were true or were they fraudulent, and Luc Montagnier was a highly respected, he recently passed away, but highly respected uh, researcher. He actually won the Nobel Prize for discovering HIV. So he basically replicated that experiment using the HIV proteins. Incredible. He came up with the same conclusion. This water that has no more physical matter in it is actually transferring information from the physical realm. The water's holding memory. This is getting into the quantum realm, guys. This is getting into the subatomic. You know, below atoms is protons, neutrons, and electrons. Those are the particles that make up an atom. But you keep going down lower than particles, you get to subatomic particles, tachyons and fermions and other things. <laughs> You keep going below those and you get to vibrational energy. And that's really what's at the core of all of us. We're vibrational energy consistent with the spoken word. And God spoke everything into existence. It is incredible. When you reread the Bible and you overlay all this science and quantum physics that we're learning, not that you have to prove the Bible, but it's all there, guys. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And the power of life and death is in the tongue. Guard your heart, for out of it come all issues of life. It's incredible. So thinking's powerful. This explains a lot. It explains how heart transplant patients or any organ transplant patient have many, many reports of this. These recipients of these new organs from another donor, the recipients wake up and they have memories and even skills that they never had before, like how to play the violin. And it was from the memory that's in the water of the new organ they just received from the previous donor. So guys, I know this gets out there a little bit. <laughs> I know this is way beyond eat keto diet or eat vegetarian diet or eat or fast or don't fast or how many push-ups do I need to do? <laughs> but this is getting over into the made whole category. Remember, there's treat symptoms. There's stewardship. That's a movement in the eat and, and the hydration. And there's made whole. And there's something in that made whole having to deal with our thinking, not so much here, but here. And the resonant frequency we need to be vibrating at, the frequency of truth. And the truth gets written on our heart by the Holy Spirit. Your creator will write that on your heart when you commune with him, have a relationship with him, listen to him, obey him, trust him, be led by him. And that's the Holy Spirit doing that. That's an individual and unique thing that you can't get from a doctor or a preacher or anyone else. That's you. And the one who put you here and put you here with a purpose. He wants to lead you, guide you. He wants you to know him. He wants to speak with you. He wants you to trust him. The human being's greatest downfall is fear of the unknown. And if we can't see that tomorrow we'll be provided for and protected, then we're going to freak out and do all we can in our own strength to make sure we're, we're provided for and protected. And God's saying, don't worry about any of that. You just worry about listening and being obedient. Trust me. I'm here. I'm never going to leave you or forsake you. I'll provide for you. I'll make a way for you. Listen and go my way, the way. There's one, one path that leads to true peace, true joy, true righteousness. And that's when you're rightly aligned with your creator and his intent of putting you into the earth, which is to just be the light and his glory in the earth to your fellow neighbor. So love God, love your neighbor yourself, and you got it all done. Pretty awesome. But you got to know that truth and believe it. And when you do, the water in your cells will start to line up. They will start to vibrate at a different frequency. And the memory they have will actually kick out the old memories of the lies that are not the truth, that you're not good enough, or that you need to be scared of something, or you're going to lack something. 
No, the truth will replace those lies and the memory in your cells and in that water is going to shift and change. And therefore, your DNA and your mitochondria and all your physical molecules will start to function like they're supposed to. And you can't force that with food, exercise, and hydration, guys. We need to do that for stewardship purposes of this physical body. But it's probably 90, 10, or 80, 20. I don't know. doesn't matter. But your thoughts are way more powerful than any physical thing you can do. So if you want to learn more about homeopathy and get your intellect wrapped around this where your heart can actually believe it, great. Go read some of these books. Read Dana Ullman. You don't have to do any of that, though. You can just believe <laughs> like my wife does. She just believes. Me, I got to have all that intellectual stuff <laughs> so that I can believe. So I'm on this journey with y'all, guys. I don't have it all figured out. But the last thing I want to do is tempt you and burden you with diet, exercise, and hydration tips without the right context of it's got to go into a heart that trusts the design. All right. I'll see y'all next time. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Dr. Ben Edwards, VeritasWellnessMember.com. You can sign up, learn more, and get with the Wellness Navigator, and we'd love to walk with you. Bye-bye.